Have you ever thought about how power is generated from a coal-fired or natural gas-fired power plant? How do we convert the heat energy in a fuel to electrical energy to drive motors and power electronic devices? And would you be offended or horrified if I told you that we need 100 gigajoules of heat energy from a fuel to convert to only about 30 gigajoules of electrical energy and the remaining 70 gigajoules are lost as waste heat? Or is this an opportunity to use these precious resources in a more economical manner? I'm Kevin Dorma. Welcome back to my whiteboard. Today we will look at the workings of a simple thermal power plant. And here's the, the schematic. A thermal power plant is a loop with a boiler that burns fuel to produce steam, a turbine that converts the energy from the steam into electrical energy, a condenser that condenses the low pressure steam back into liquid water, and a recirculation pump to deliver the water back to the boiler. We will look at each part of this loop. The boiler burns natural gas to produce hot, high-pressure steam. We will consider a small boiler that is fed with 10 kilograms per second of water at 120 degrees Celsius. Why is the water at 120 degrees? Well, we will get to that at the end of the loop. Steam is produced at 4,000 kPa gauge at 450 degrees. From this, we know that the steam has absorbed 28 megawatts worth of heat. From my video on the efficiency of furnaces, we know that the efficiency of this boiler depends only on the temperature of the feed water. And at 120 degrees, this boiler is about 85% efficient. This is one of the inefficiencies with thermal power generation. And this means that the boiler consumes 33 megawatts worth of natural gas. That's it for the boiler. On to the turbine. The high pressure steam flows through a set of fan blades towards the outlet of the turbine, which is at a very low pressure. Here, the outlet pressure on our turbine is at 90 kPa of vacuum. A large modern turbine is around 90% efficient for converting heat into work as the pressure is reduced. Our turbine extracts 96 megawatts of power and produces a fog with about 10% water. The turbine spins the generator and we extract 9.1 megawatts of electrical power. So hold it. Why did our wonderful 90% efficient turbine only recover 9.6 megawatts of power when we added 28 megawatts of heat into the steam? For this, we have a short segue to the second law of thermodynamics with our favorite German physicist, our 19th century German physicist, Rudolf Clausius. He devoted a lot of brain power towards the energy efficiency of steam engines, which is all about converting heat into work. This led to the mathematical concept of entropy, which tells us, that, which tells us something about the possibility of converting heat to work. He summarized one of the concepts of the second law with Heat can never pass from a colder to a warmer body without some other change connected therewith occurring at the same time. Or, in a more practical sense, there is no such thing as a free lunch. In fact, things are so bad, you will never even break even. So, things are not looking very good for our, for our heat engine. It is helpful to look at a graph of energy and pressure. 
The boiler makes steam, which is at a high energy and temperature, at a high pressure. The temperature is much higher than the condensation temperature of steam at that pressure. Then we reduce the pressure along a path that is theoretically perfect and extract work from the heat in the steam. This is what the turbine does. Note that the energy is getting closer to the line at which, or closer to the condensation line, which is where we will start to see fog. The pressure keeps dropping and we create a vacuum. We also create fog and this is a problem. I forgot to tell you that the steam is traveling at about 150 meters per second or 540 kilometers per hour. Turbine blades are damaged very quickly when hit with tiny drops of water at this speed. There is a very practical limit to how much heat we can convert to work. Now we see a problem. We added 2,700 kilojoules of heat for every kilogram of water that we added to the boiler. But the very best that we can do, theoretically, is recover about 1,000 kilojoules of work from every kilogram of steam. This means that even in a theoretically perfect world, we lost about 1,500 kilo kilojoules of energy from every kilogram of steam. The second law of thermodynamics is the shot of reality that separates science fiction fantasy from actual science fact. And this is something that we can never beat. Let's go back to our system and see where this wasted energy goes. The vacuum pressure steam is condensed, and this con converts the low pressure steam into fairly hot water. The condenser allows us to get the pressure really low and extract more work from the heat energy in the steam. As well, clean water is precious. We recycle the water back to the boiler. The condenser discharges waste heat to the environment and is the largest contributor to inefficiency in this cycle. And that brings us to the last part of the loop, the circulation pump. We need a pump to increase the pressure from the vacuum conditions in the condenser to the high pressure needed to deliver the water to the boiler. But we also need to do something else, unfortunately, with this cryptic process, the deaerator. The condenser and the turbine outlet operates under vacuum, and all equipment leaks, so air will always leak into the equipment. The seams on the condenser are never perfect, and the rotating shaft on the turbine is never perfectly sealed. Air always leaks in. And since oxygen causes corrosion problems in the steam system, we need to remove it. The deaerator heats the water and drives out all of the dissolved gases, including oxygen. This heats the water to 120 degrees Celsius. And that completes the cycle. Now we see how much the second law of thermodynamics has taken from us. We consumed 33 megawatts of natural gas fuel and produced 9.1 megawatts of electrical power. The energy efficiency for our simple natural gas-fired power plant is 27%. We have lost 18 megawatts of energy as waste heat. How can we do better? A simple thermal power plant, such as a coal-fired facility, is about 30% efficient. We can use a different method to recover work. We could use natural gas in a combined cycle gas turbine plant and recover about 50% of the fuel energy. We are still wasting 50% of the fuel in the natural gas. How can we turn this waste heat into something valuable? What can we do 
with hot water at 45 degrees. We can use hot water to provide heat for our homes or businesses, such as this combined heat and power facility in Iqaluit. This is how we can recover more value from our precious resources. We need to change the way that we think about power generation. We need to embrace the power generator facility that is in our backyard. Take care.